everyone and welcome back to another video. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. Today I have a special bonus video. Now this is an art haul video and normally I wouldn't do art hauls on my channel. Um, I actually like watching art hauls. Um, I don't do them normally because I never have enough art supplies to do an art haul. I tend to buy art supplies a little bit at a time, buying one thing here, one thing there, and I never have enough all at one time in order to do a proper video. But earlier this month I had a kind of Copic marker emergency and I had to get a load of refills and while I was at it online I bought some other stuff and by the time I'd finished I actually had a decent amount to, sh to share. So. I thought I might as well do an art haul video as this is probably going to be the only time, at least within the next six months, that I can actually do an art haul video. I may do another one, but it won't be for a long time. So just before I get started and start showing you all the stuff that I bought, I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, this is a sort of a mixed media haul, so I have traditional art supplies, um, I have more stationary supplies and I have some scrapbooking supplies as well so um, this sort of covers all the different things that I do and it's a mixed media haul. Secondly I'm not sponsored or affiliated with any of the companies that I'm showing you here today I just happen to like their products. I also bought all the stuff myself um, I think I took it took me about six months to save up to, to get some of these supplies particularly these. All the stuff that I have here um, I either got locally in my art shop or I ordered online from European based suppliers. So I'm going to post links to all the places that I got uh, my supplies from and maybe it would be helpful for you if you're looking for some of these products in Europe because um, most of them here actually aren't made in Europe so hopefully that might be helpful. Anyway, so now I'm going to get on and show you all the bits that I bought. So, first of all, I'm going to start off by showing you um, the selection of papers that I bought. First of all, I have here a selection of coloured card in pink, green, uh, a nickel and a chocolate brown. Then here are three pieces of just normal uh, chipboard or cardboard and I'm going to be using this to make some boxes and some other fun things that I have planned. And then the rest of this are patterned papers. And as you know, if you've watched some of my other videos, I do use patterned papers in some of my mixed media creations. And I really like having a, a supply of it, and I'd completely run out. And it was on sale, so it all seemed to work at the point. And all of these are double sided. Um, I'm just going to show you the sides that I like and the reason why I bought the paper. So I have this one. This one here, which is a rather gentle, grey, sort of sketchy feel, which I thought would be rather nice on something. Um, this pink one here, some leaves, a South Pacific pattern, some another um, South Pacific themed and these are journaling cards which I have a little uh, plan for these ones here. I'm not completely sure yet but there's something I've got an idea for there. And then here this is for my uh, the next um, scrapbooking project I'm going to do and this as you can see is all a really colourful spring themed one. I'm not quite sure which pattern I'm going to use, I really liked all of them, particularly the butterflies, I really love the bright colours. Next I have these Mickey Mouse comics here. They're, they're both vintage and they have a really nice nostalgic feel. This one's black and white and grey and this one has got some colour in it and I thought they, they went so well together. They're part of the same set I think and I thought they'd make a really nice project, perhaps the inside and outside of a box or the inside and outside of a notebook. I'm not quite sure yet but I'm certainly going to make something uh, special out of those. This is another spring themed one and this one has cute rabbits and I think that's a lamb and some little chicks and things and the other side has these um, journaling cards well they're not exactly journaling cards they're more like um, sentiments and just little images I think they'd be really nice to cut out and stick just on your notebook or in your planner or something this is why I bought a few of these to go in my planner as well and these ones are they're sort of school themed, but I rather like some of the sentiments and some of them. Now here's another autumn one, which I liked uh, this side of. This 
nice. I liked the colours in this one. And then last I have here two vintage travel ones and I love these ones as well. So these are the pattern papers that I got and that should keep me going for quite a while. So next I got a couple of new sketchbooks. Now this one I've actually had since I think it was October but I just haven't used it uh, yet. Well, I think I did one drawing in it but I haven't really used it so this is why um, it's in this haul video and this is a mini tan, uh, toned tan sketchbook by Strathmore and this is made in the USA but they have a distributor here in Europe and I put the link down below and uh, this is a drawing I did over Christmas using it and it's a lovely sketchbook for doing coloured uh, pencils in you can even use Copic markers in it and it's a really nice little size and I actually like using the tan paper because I can use my white pencils as a, use white as a colour more so I'm going to look forward to filling that up more particularly over the summer and then the other book that I got was this one here. This is a Canson Mix Media. It's A4 and it's 300 grams. So the paper is uh, really thick. The paper is textured and ribbed on one side and then fairly smooth on the other. It's really good for watercolours and I really like this paper. I know some people prefer much smoother papers but I actually really like the texture and it's also quite helpful um, because I rub out a lot so you can rub out quite a bit on this paper which is helpful for me and you get 30 sheets in this sketchbook which is a lot of paper particularly as the paper is so thick it's uh, as I said earlier 300 grams you can uh, easily draw or paint double sided so I really enjoy using this uh, paper for watercolours and for inks and anything that's a wet media in other words because my other sketchbooks just can't take much watercolour and I do have large sheets of watercolour paper but it's not in a sketchbook and it's rather nice having things in a sketchbook because then you can look back through and you can take it around with you so I wanted a, a watercolour sketchbook and this one is pretty good and I'm really pleased with it so they're the paper and sketchbooks that I got so here I have a load of Copic marker refills and this is the reason, the main reason that I actually went shopping at all because it got to a point where I had over 20 markers that were dried up that didn't have enough ink, enough ink in them and when you only have a small collection of markers like I do having 20 out of ink is a lot and I ended up actually not being able to do certain pieces of art uh, I had no blues left, no orange it, it kind of got to a stage where I really had to buy refills so I've got 20 here and I still have a couple on back order actually so they'll hopefully be sent soon and this is what the uh, various ink bottles look like the various ink is the Copic refill and they're not cheap it is an investment to get these but one of these bottles will refill a sketch marker 10 times so if like me you really love using Copic markers and you use them all the time then it's actually very economical once you've uh, worked it all out and if you use them a lot so I got a load of different colors um, some of the most important ones were the orange the lemon yellow I have here and some of the pinks and in particular the blues I had no blue left so they have the number and the name of the color on the tip here they have um, numbers and little ridges down this side and that shows you how much to fill your marker up with and obviously if you want to know more about how to refill the markers there's loads of information um, on the Copic Marker website but um, really quickly what, what you do is you pull out the end of the nib here of a marker, pull the nib out I do use my fingers because I don't have the special tweezers I'm not going to do it right now because I'm going to get ink all over me but I pull, pull it out with my fingers, I don't seem to have any trouble doing that and then you unscrew the lid of the refill bottle and then you drop some drops of the ink into the barrel and that refills the marker so it's quite simple and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to spend quite a bit of time refilling my markers but that means I'll have them all full and ready to go and it also occurred to me just really quickly as I was here to um, just show you how you can tell when your markers are running out of ink 
So this is one of my all-time favourite colours. This is YR68. This is orange. Now this has a little bit of ink left in it as you can see. The reason I knew it was running out is because, I can just see this here, when you use the chisel end and you make and you make lines, if your marker is running out of ink you will get streaks. Now this is, uh, this is very low on ink because it's, uh, it's huge streaks. Some of my other markers, like this brown here, um, the streaks are a lot less visible. But it's still running out all the same and I got a refill. So that's how you can tell if your markers are running out of ink. You can also tell if the brush nib has got white patches on it. And that's another way you can tell that the markers run out of ink. And this one actually has no ink left at all. So apart from all those refill inks, I also got a few new sketch markers and I do collect the sketch instead of the chow, um, mostly because I like the design of the sketch better and the sketch comes in the most colours. So these are the new colours that I bought here and I got these ones at the top, blush, sand and baked clay, they're basically skin tones and I needed a few more to bulk up my collection. And then the rest, I just got a few that I particularly liked. I mean, this one, Prune, I think is really lovely. You may be thinking that these two are very similar colours. They are very similar colours. And this is the biggest problem with buying markers online, is the fact that you can't tell really clearly what the colour is, because the colours online and the colour charts look so different on different monitors, and they look nothing like they do in real life. So, in a shop, I could tell quite clearly that these are different but they are very similar so I probably wouldn't buy both of them at the same time. Online however they looked completely different and th this is just one of those things that is a downside to buying them online. Um, I don't have any other choice and it doesn't bo bother me too much because eventually I have bought them both anyway because I want to eventually have the whole collection one day. So it's just one of those things you kind of have to roll with when you're buying online, but it is a slight downside. I also got the set of pro markers here. If you watch other art channels on YouTube, particularly the big ones, you've probably seen most of them review the new Windsor and Newton pro markers. They've all been sent sets to have a look and to play with, and they've all been doing videos on them. And as far as I can understand it, uh, Windsor and Newton, I, I mean, the Pro Markers were originally Letra Set and now they're rebranding to Windsor & Newton. The ink and the quality and everything is still the same, it's just now Windsor & Newton Pro Markers instead of Letra Set. And because of this, all the art shops and art websites are now wanting to bring in the new uh, Windsor & Newton Markers, so a lot of the original Letra Set ones, these are the Letra Set ones, not the Windsor & Newton ones, the original Letra Set ones are on sale and you can get them at very good prices and the ink is still the same high quality ink so I got this set of 12 at I think it was 40% discount which I thought would be such a silly thing just to pass up so I got this as well and I have used Pro Markers before and the ink is really high quality and I knew that I could use these so this is the Magna Fantasy set, as I said there were 12 in here plus a blender and I got this set because they have a really nice colour selection, I like the pastel tones, I did a quick uh, colour swatch here, I liked the, the pastel colours but they also had a couple of skin colours, they had some pinks, the nice light uh, spring greens, it was just a nice set and Plus, I didn't have to spend hours choosing colours, so I was rather pleased I could get a set. One of the things that I like about the Pro Markers is that they have a bullet nib on the end of it, because sometimes I find that my the brush nib on my Copic Markers can, can be a bit big if I'm doing very detailed colouring, so it's really nice to have an, a high quality alcohol based marker that has a t fine tip like this. I know you can get fine tip tips for the Copic Markers, but um, the Copic sketch come with a brush nib, so it's nice to have a range, and you can um, mix them. So because they're both alcohol-based, you can mix and use them all in a project. 
and I'm going to be doing a video soon, in the next couple of weeks, where I'm going to draw a drawing and colour it just using this set so I can properly try them out. The next thing I got were a pack of 20 tripless fine liners by Stedler and these are coloured liners and they come in this really nice plastic case which is great for travelling and it also has, if you, you, you can clip the lid back like this and it makes a stand for your desk which I think is really nice. These have been on my wish list for ages and I was originally using the Faber-Castell Fine Grip Pen for doing my um, outlining when I'm using my coloured lines and most of my Faber-Castell pens were running out of ink it's a general story for most of this haul by the way, most of my supplies were running out of ink. So I decided to get a new set and I decided to try these Stedler ones. I've played with them a little bit so far, they're really lovely for writing with and they have super fine nibs. It's 0.3mm so that's actually smaller than a lot of my, uh, my black liners that I use. So you could use these to do really detailed and, and, and intricate colouring. The Stadler also does a pen, a, another liner that's a bit thicker, which I also want to try because I think that would make a very good colouring supply for my colouring pages. But the colours of these are so vibrant and beautiful, I'm really impressed with them. I need to do some more tests to see how they work well with Copics and I will be doing a video where I just use these to do an illustration as well. So I'll get more into that when I do that video. So this was another thing that I've had on my wish list for a while. These are the Ganzai Tambi watercolour set. I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. This is the 24 set. I didn't want to get the full set, but the 12 set didn't really have enough colours, so I thought the 24 was a good in-between number. And they are the most enormous watercolours. As you can see, an enormous watercolour pans. I've seen a lot of reviews on these and one of the things that uh, lots of people were saying about them was that they were very vibrant and bold and opaque and I really wanted just to test out another type of watercolour and so I felt that these would actually go really nicely with my patterns. Anyway, I'm going to be doing a whole video on these um, and test them out as well so we'll see if they're as good as I hope they are. So these are just the last few things I picked up, a little pot of tacky glue, I have some refills from my Pentel pocket brush pen here, these. and then I got these blue uh, pencils, these are the Prismacolor colour erase pencils, I do have a full set of the coloured, the normal colour erase pencils because I use them all the time in my sketching. But these ones were special, these were uh, no copy blue ones and apparently you can use these and then if you line over them and you scan your artwork, which I do with all of mine, the blue if you have any blue pencil marks left on your scanned image, the scanner doesn't pick them up. That This is like a special shade of blue that the scanner doesn't pick up, so I was really interested to try those. A couple of paint brushes here. This one's a very fine one, and this one is a short, stubby one, which I have already used. I used it this morning. And then the last thing I have are two packs of very cheap pencils and a 24 pack of very cheap pens. It's two euros. And these are for my cheap art supply challenges that I have planned in the next little while. Hope you've enjoyed this haul video. As I said earlier, this is not a normal sort of video here on my channel, but I've had so many things arrive over the last few days, and they were all piling up on my desk, so I thought it would be kind of silly not to do a haul video before I put them all away. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. As I said earlier as well, I have links to all the websites where I bought all this in the description box, and now I've got to go and start refilling 20 Copic markers. So I'll see you for my normal video on Sunday.